Good morning, church. My name is Morgan Oliver, and I'm a part of the creative and production teams at Audacious Central Manchester. Today, we'll be talking about evangelism and explore what it means to us in this day and age. Just before we dive into scripture, it's good to know that the word evangelize originates from the Latin word evangelizare or evangeliare, meaning to spread or preach the gospel. And the Greek word evangelizeste, which means bring good news. Now let's get into the word of God and open our Bibles into the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. I'm reading from the Amplified Version, which says, But you will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses to tell people about me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. Now, we know that in this day and age, Jerusalem is equivalent to your city, town, or village. Judea means your county or state or region. Samaria means your neighboring territory, so all the cities, states, or regions around you. And to the ends of the earth, it would simply mean spreading the good news of Jesus to all the nations of the world. The truth is, whether you are a newborn believer or have been on this journey for a very long time, the call of God to share the gospel of redemption, salvation and eternal life in our cities, counties, nations and to the ends of the earth is to all of us. One of my favorite quotes is, preach the gospel at all times and if necessary, use words. I believe what St. Francis of Assisi meant by this timeless statement is that one of our main goals as followers of Jesus should be to understand that we're called to live our lives in such a way that the Word of God naturally flows out of us in our daily living. That means our characters, our personalities, our actions, our integrity and our behaviors in every situation should display the fruits of the presence of God's Spirit in us, so much so that everyone around us can't help but sense the presence and the love of God in everything we do, even before we feel the urge to preach at them with words. Well, can you imagine how powerful our community of faith will be when we don't just get the revelation of this statement, but start to live and breathe the Word of God into other people's lives? Now you may ask, but how can we do that in the busyness of our day-to-day? And I hear you, church. My wife Marie and I, just like the majority of you all, wake up, get ready, have breakfast, drop our kids to school and go to work or university or wherever it is that you go to, stay at or spend most of your time on a daily basis. Whether at home or out and about, there are always something we can do to spread the good news in a way that will help transform the lives of those around us. So to break it down for those of us who can easily get caught in that, I came up with three simple steps we can do every day. It's starting today, this week, this month, and keep practicing them on the lead up to this Christmas so that we are better equipped to attend our call to evangelism. When it comes to sharing the gospel, step one, eat up. That means feed yourself with the word of God. Not literally, but you can start by reading it first. Now I know that some of us will think, oh, but I'm not really a reader. What can I do? That's okay. The Bible says in Romans 8, 1, that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So don't beat yourself up if you you hear from God better by listening to his word or watching it being preached. There are countless podcasts and video preachings all over social media and the internet where you can commit to feeding yourself the Word of God on a daily basis. Now, you can use that as a starting point and then go to step number two, which is action it. That means act like Jesus. Ask yourself, what would Jesus do? Pick a verse that spoke to you during your daily spiritual feeding time and then ask him how you can live out that word through your actions today. Take one of the Bible's shortest verses, John eleven thirty five, 35, for example. Jesus wept. Now, I'm not encouraging you to go about weeping and sobbing in front of your work colleagues or your unsaved family members or friends as a way to evangelize. But adding context to that scripture, if you read the whole chapter of John 11, 
you will see that Jesus wept out of empathy and compassion for those suffering with the death of Lazarus. And we all know he brought Lazarus back to life soon after. But my point is, just like Jesus did, daily we get to walk around broken people who are sad and lost in their own personal circumstances. So how can we show kindness, empathy and compassion for those people in our lives who need it most? Could that be an easy way to live out the gospel without the need to preach at people? Sela. Now, let's go into step three. Live out. That means live a life led by the Holy Spirit. At this stage, by doing steps one and two for long enough, you'll be filled with lots of spiritual and natural tools that you can take wherever you go. Perhaps now it's time to reach out further afield, building connections and expanding your network with people outside your day-to-day -day circles. If you ask me, I believe a great way to live out the gospel is by volunteering in a team at church, where you get to serve God by building His house. You also get to connect with people from different walks of life and love and serve a wider range of people in our community, plus learn new skills. Another way to live out the good news of Christ is by joining one or all of our mission trips. We just came back from Athens, Greece, and there are no words to describe this powerful and fulfilling experience that is to live out the word of God to the ends of the earth. And that's when we truly are in the wilderness and God can really use that experience to shake us and change changes rapidly. While what otherwise would have taken years to grow in us, he can shift our perspective of his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven in a couple of days and it will be transformed forever. So church, whether in our homes, our neighborhood, our work, our study places, our cities, our nations and beyond, I'm believing that as we eat the word of God, act like Jesus would, and live out by the power of Holy Spirit, God will show us new ways and use you and I to preach the gospel at all times and, if necessary, use words. That's it for me for today, church. Thank you for reading and watching or listening to this devotional. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.